Jeremy Wina, Black Belt Broker Team, Colorado Springs Foodie Realtor, bringing you foodie realtor stuff from the road, sort of. I'm in Pueblo. Everybody knows that I spend a lot of time in Pueblo because I have a jujitsu gym here. But I also sell a lot of real estate in Pueblo. And since I'm down here, of course, I eat in Pueblo. And I got friends in Pueblo. And I think Pueblo's a pretty cool place. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind living here someday in the future. So Pueblo, where do you go for a Thai? Yeah, it seems pretty unanimous. Pukau Thai is where everybody says is the best. Um, I've not had any Thai food in Pueblo that I can remember. As y'all know, I spent a couple weeks in Northern Thailand and I ate a lot of food while I was there. So I'm kind of snobby about my Thai food. And uh, here we are giving it a try. So, first thing I got, red curry coconut with crawfish. And I'm really excited about this. We got it medium. Um, I don't know what their spice levels are here since I've never been. I always recommend, unless you're a spice beastie, start with medium. It may be nothing, you can always add spice. It may be tragic. It all depends on you and your spice levels. Not too spicy. Not too spicy at all. But it's there. Sweet. Salty. Both are really good. A little bit of that, I mean, it's covering all the bases. Sweet from the pineapple, the salt. Salt is absolutely fish sauce flavor. Um, it's there 100%. It is a little bit fishy because of the crawfish. We live in the middle of the country. Stuff's not always the most amazingly fresh here. And it's still very good. Good texture, not overcooked. Green peppers, they're obviously gonna be crunchy. Really good. Dish number two, recommended by the wait staff. Said something outside the box, you know, if I wanna try something a little different. Waterfall beef salad, right? Thinly sliced beef. It's rolled in rice powder, like those are the little pieces on it. Onion, the onion looks like still crunchy and crispy. A bit of a sauce, but it's basically like saucy goodness, garlic, onions, and beef. It's good. The beef is pretty tender. The onions, while they're really fresh and crunchy, overpower a little but not bad and obviously you saw that but it was like a lot of onion like a lot and it still doesn't overpower um this is not spicy at all um i didn't they didn't uh, offer an uh, option on that i would definitely definitely add some chilies with uh fish sauce for this one i think that's really gonna like kick it up just enough to be like really good it's a very common thai thing the meat and salad. Honestly, it's not my favorite kind of salad, but as a dish, it's great. Now with some rice and on it, but it's like, it's not super hot and it's not super cold. It's kind of in the middle. Again, kind of a thing. Lob and stuff like that is also that way. I definitely like it. Something cool to try. Like would I order it every single time? No. Would I order it just now and again? Yes, absolutely. Cool, different, outside the box, not what we normally get. I don't often order Thai iced tea. I do like it, but I find most places it's too sweet. I'm always complaining about that, right? I do not like sweet, sweet things. This Thai iced tea is fantastic. It is perfect, right? If you're at Pukau Thai in Pueblo, get the Thai iced tea. It has a nice, strong tea flavor, like they absolutely brewed it, right? and got that good strong. They didn't overpower it with the cream or the milk. Even sitting here for a while with the ice in it, it didn't water it down. Like it has such a good strong flavor that even with the ice melting and half the glass gone and condensating, it's still delicious. So when you go too spicy and you hurt yourself, this saves your life. Really good Thai iced tea, really, really good didn't hit on. So this place has all of the standard things you would expect and more. Um, all the curries, uh, quite a good curry li list. It looks really good. All the fried rices, lots of seafood options, like a lot of seafood options, which is quite rare in Colorado. Most of them have a very small amount. These guys have mussels and blue crab and 
uh, crawfish and things of that nature, so they're definitely going outside the box. They have a full bar, so they have cocktails. There isn't actually a bar, but they have a cocktail list that looks amazing. I super want a lychee martini, I'm not going to lie, but I have a lot of adulting to do today, so that's not going to happen. They also have imported Thai beers. Um, I was going to get a Lucky Buddha, but again, I have adulting to do, so no beer for me today, but a cool beer list and a pretty legit dessert list, um, which we did get. And I'll make a video of it here in a second, but I wanted to cover that they have a pretty cool looking dessert list along with all of this amazing stuff you'd expect with the noodles and the rice dishes. And you know, I mean, it's it's very good menu for a Thai restaurant, like a lot of options, all of which are things that I like. I really want to try a couple more of the curries. I went with this because it was at the top of the list and recommended by the wait staff. And you know me, somebody tells me to get something. I do, almost always. So we went with the crawfish, pineapple, red curry. And I freaking love red curry, so why not? But next time, probably gonna get the, uh, yeah, maybe the eggplant or the, I don't even know what that is. Adamant's fried rice. It looks like a little ri fried rice dumpling, so that's gonna have to happen. I can't wait to come back, actually. I'm already looking forward to it, and I haven't even really ate my first meal. That's probably a good sign, everybody. Probably a good sign. So, dish number three, street noodle. They talk about this being, you know, one of those dishes you get on any street corner in all of Thailand, because let's be honest, I think that Pad Thai being the go-to is an American thing, not a Thai thing. I feel like there you got Pad Su, is it Pad Sui, or drunken noodle style, or like this more than Pad Thai. This has a broth, bean sprouts, cilantro, beef, very saucy. I'm trying to get some out. That is delicious. Delicious. This may have moved into number three spot of my favorite Thai dish in the United States. Like, it's really good. Crunch of the sprouts is awesome. The noodles with the coating of the broth is really good. A little bit of beef and then that fresh cilantro flavor. The only thing that would make this better, more spicy. But this one has zero spicy because my cameraman is a spice wimp. But we don't hold it against him. We just add spice to his dishes. <laughs> That's what you get. Little peanut, little scallion. So good. I think that one wins. He knew it would. He already knew. And it's out. Dessert. My wife loves dessert. Me? Yeah, whatever. I don't super care. Because again, I'm not a sweet human. I'm a salty human. <laughs> I'm a salty human. In Thailand, I ate sticky rice and mango. Like, I wouldn't say every day, but practically every day. Maybe more than once some days. It's amazing, and mangoes there are amazing. There it was different, it was not green, but they made their sticky rice green, which makes it kind of cool and contrasty. And it's got a little bit of a sauce, which I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure it's a coconut, some kind of sauce. We got black ses uh, sesame seeds and some lovely sliced and diced mango. So, let's give this a whirl. Some sticky rice. I love how they make it so glutinous. Such a freaking good dessert. To me, this is what dessert should be. Don't get me wrong, I like ice cream. I like cake and pie and whatever. Choose your baked good. But sweet glutinous rice with the coconut sauce in the bottom, which does, coconut has that little tiny bit of I don't want to say saltiness, but something earthy, salty, something going on with, with the coconut milk. And then the coconut cream on the top and the sweetness of the mango with the, you know, sweetness of the rice. And the rice is quite sweet. It's just fantastic. And we're in Colorado, not known for its mango. It's a joke because we can't grow a mango here if we had to. The mango is not the most flavorful I've ever had because that's impossible. It's too hard to ship them, right? When you get a, 
when you get fruit in tropical places, it ruins fruit for you in not tropical places because it's just that good. It's so good. It's so good. And this is still really good. Like it's nice, ripe, tasty mango. But it's it's not Thai mango. Or Hong Kong mango. Or Cuban mango. Or even Mexico mango. But it's good. Mmm. That is good. So you live in Colorado Springs or Pueblo and you want to know where to eat, call us. You want to buy a house, call us. You want to sell a house, call us. But we're the people that know what's going on in your neighborhood, things to do, things to see, and where to eat. That's what I do, right? I make sure that everybody loves their house and their neighborhood and that they know where to go get a good bite to eat. Because guess what? Everybody's got to eat. You might as well enjoy it. If you're in Pueblo, or Pueblo West, get down to Pukau Thai and have the Thai iced tea and the street noodle. You'd be super glad that you listened to me. Super glad. With that, we'll catch you on the next one.